So we're still at um, the house where Audrey Hepburn lived, or the, the building that's in the place where her house was now. And um, this is this is the place where um, a lot of the action in the story happens. And one of the things, one of the the things that's quite noticeable about the story is that they spend a lot of time in the cellar. Um, the the area is there's there's a battle raging above um, their houses at, at some points during the story. Um, the Germans have occupied Velf, where Audrey lives, and the, there's a war going on where the, where the Allies are trying to take the place and liberate the, the Dutch. Um, and so it's a really frightening place. And un unfortunately, as I speak now in, in April 2022, events like that are happening across Ukraine. And um, the, the, the story, the, the similarities in the stories that I'm hearing from Ukraine um, echo what what was happening with with audrey when she lived in valp during the during the war so i thought i'd just read a couple of pages to um just explain i i, I suppose when i was writing the story i wanted to show Ed, edda and audrey being being brave and um taking on taking on the germans with her, her actions for the resistance but i also wanted to show how utterly frightening um and and confusing it was to be in a village which was a battlefield and so I just wanted to read a couple of pages um, which were inspired by events that happened in this in this spot. Edda had stopped dancing altogether now. There was simply not enough food to enable her to do anything more than walk into Velp to collect their meagre rations from the butcher and the baker and greengrocer, then return home and lie in bed. Just as there were not enough candles for them to light the cellar for more than an hour in the evening, meaning she had stopped reading and stopped drawing too. Edda was hungry, but not just a rumbling tummy kind of hunger. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I've just been joined by a cat. How lovely. Hello. Right, anyway. So we'll go back to that, so excuse me. Edda was hungry, but not just a rumbling tummy kind of hunger. There was a hunger that made it feel like every molecule in her body was crying out for something to eat. That winter, the Netherlands was starving. Most of the food and fuel and anything useful had been taken to Germany on heavily guarded trains. Even though people foraged the fields and woods, there was barely any food to be found. The Dutch were dying every day of disease and hunger. For breakfast, they had one slice of bread made from pea flour and a cup of hot water. For lunch, nothing. For dinner, a watery potato, soup and nettle broth. That was it. After every meal, Edda still felt, felt, still felt faint with hunger. Edda and her mum and aunt and oppa always slept in the cellar now, with German V1 rockets flying over nightly towards London. They decided there was no point in taking a risk. And it made sense to heat the single cellar room only, now that there was no, no coal and little wood in the middle of the coldest winter to be inflicted on the Netherlands in a generation. They used a bucket as a toilet and it was Edda's job to empty it. And there the, there the, that's the conditions they lived in and I based that on, on what I found out from, from um, Edda's biographies. In fact, I'll show you. Um, the, uh, when I'm writing a book, I, um, sorry, I should have got these out before. When I write in a book, um, I'll read biographies. So this is a, a book about Audrey Hepburn by her son, Sean Ferrer. Um, so, and it's, uh, it tells a story of, uh, it touches on what happened to her during the, during the war. Um, and also another couple of biographies I've read, Dutch Girl by Anne, uh, Robert Matson is really good as well. And um, Audrey Hepburn, Ian Woodward is, um, is quite a well-known one too. And one of the things I wanted to finish this, this part of the, the, um, the film on was um, was how Audrey Hepburn she suffered she suffered all that she nearly starved to death and she was saved um, in part by UNICEF food so the United um, Nations Children's Fund which which um, which brought food to feed the children and feed the population who were starving um, and in later life Audrey Hepburn became an ambassador for um, for UNICEF and did loads and loads of work in different countries to try and help children who were starving to death in, in a similar situation to what she was right here where we're stood now.